Hello, my name is Todd Van Gilder. I work for Wyman Technology. I'm an engineering manager of our Clarkston office. Uh, Wyman Technology is an NI Alliance gold member partner. Uh, we do systems integration. Uh, we do full build, electrical, servo hydraulic, and mechanical. And then we write the LabVIEW software that makes it all go. And we're here today to talk about our new product, our new CAN product. So this is our new CAN product. This is what we call the workspace. There's three major components to it the CAN service that is a Windows service that runs down your system tray, the CAN database editor, and the CAN workspace. Uh, with the CAN database editor, which looks like this, you can import from an XNet database, a .dbc, which is the vector databases, or this database, which is SQLite, and add whatever ECUs you want, configure them, and turn every, your signals into engineering units. So this is where you do your CAN configuration to put your CAN signals in engineering units. The service running down here in the tray accepts a multitude of connections from either this workspace or from another custom uh, application that implements the API that is utilized in this workspace so that we can provide a fully diagnostic CAN interface for LabVIEW developers while they're developing their custom applications specific for their customer that have a a CAN implementation as a part of them. And then through that API, you can add to that custom application CAN signals and CAN values and add them to DAC channels so that you can graph CAN with DAC and log them together. And at the same time, have a fully functional application that will simulate ECUs, stimulate ECUs. Um, we've got a lot of different ways to look at the CAN signals uh, in the bus monitor as a graph with some statistical information. Um, down below in the multi-com list box that shows the CAN signals, actual values, uh, means, averages, differentials between the cursors. Um, a single trace window here um, that you can also configure um, limits for the different signals and if they go outside the limits it'll flag it as red and then you can acknowledge uh, that you've seen that it's one out of tolerance and it'll turn it to orange so that you know at some point during the uh, application instance that that particular value went out of tolerance but now is in tolerance. Um, this shows all the messages that are being transmitted on the bus for whatever ECU you're simulating or stimulating. Um, and then over here shows the actual values that you're transmitting onto the bus. And you can change those values from this interface as well. Uh, this bus monitor has all kinds of filters built into it. So I can say I just want to include that particular ARB ID, apply it, and now I'm only seeing that particular signal. Each window that you set up, and you can set up as many as you want, you can turn logging on and off for just the information that's in that window. Uh, or you can turn logging on from the workspace interface or from the system tray down here, and it logs all your CAN traffic to a different file. You can have as many of these interfaces up at any point in time you want. You have the ability to float these windows and take it outside of the workspace and put it on a different monitor if you want to or wherever you want to go or then you can just redock it back into the workspace like that. Um, you also have another window here, this is what we call our multi-trace window. And you can turn this into a fixed view which just shows you the information there at that point in time. Or you can do a rolling trace. Uh, I happen to be on a signal that uh, doesn't have any information. You can launch these windows from this interface too. Oh, this is our transmit interface, so this is a single transmit window, so if there's a particular message that you're just interested in changing the payload, you can do that from the single transmit window, change the rate, change the values from here. Uh, what else? You can launch the windows from up here. You got a single frame, multi-frame, graph frame, bus monitor, single transmit. We also have a custom transmit, which allows you to configure any message you want to put on the bus that isn't defined in your database or is, you can do it either way and put additional custom information on it. You can save that to a file so that you can get to it again when you want to. Um, there's also a API for scripting. So any scripting language that can make a TCP IP connection and serialize and deserialize JSON data can um, include, you know, transmit a message, write a message, read a message. Everything that you would think that should be a part of an API is there. Um, we have it fully implemented in Python. It could be done in TestStand as well or any other language that can make that TCP IP connection. 
Uh, so we give you the flexibility as a LabVIEW developer from the get-go to have a tool that helps you write your code so that you can see what's going on with CAN, give you the tools with inside your custom application specific, uh, the, the API to get CAN information into that application while you're looking at it and monitoring it, and then the ability to script stuff if you want to to automate different things. Thanks for watching our demo today on our new CAN product. For more information, you can go to our website at wymantech.com.